Good morning, everyone. Uh, we will get started here. Um, first of all, I'd like to make sure that you guys can hear me. Uh, could you raise your hand or type something in the Q&A so that I know that you can hear? Oh, good, few hands raised, perfect. Thank you very much. So we are live streaming this webinar to YouTube and the recording will be available on careersandoilandgas.com next week and uh, will be on, available on YouTube immediately following. Um, I would like to start by acknowledging that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 nations, the Pikani, Siksika, Kana, Stony Nakoda, and Tsutina First Nations. We acknowledge the ancestral territory of the Siksikait Sitapi, the Blackfoot Confederacy, and the home of the Métis Region Number 3. This project is funded by the Government of Canada's Sectoral Initiatives Program, and opinions shared in this webinar are heteroalamize and do not necessarily reflect those of the Government of Canada. So I am here today, I'm Brianne O'Reilly, I'm the Program Manager for Petrol and I, and I'm here today with Lisette, our analyst, Lisette Cameron, our analyst. Um, I'm going to start by finding out a little bit about who we have on the call today. So I'm launching our first poll there, if you could respond and let us know who you are. Um, the Petrol MI Division of Energy Safety Canada has a mandate to collaborate with industry, government, educators, and training agencies to support and advance the development of a sustainable, skilled, and productive workforce. We specialize in providing labor market, oil and gas labor market data and insights, as well as resources for workforce and career planning. Going to, I'll give it a couple more minutes here, or, or a couple more seconds, I should say, for you guys to finish the poll there. Um, today's webinar is uh, on parts three and four of our four-part series, where we surveyed Canadian energy industry employees to learn how the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting work practices and productivity. We heard from more than 300 employed and unemployed energy workers from across Canada who completed the survey in August and September. In addition, we interviewed 13 leaders from energy companies. Um, the series, as I said, is divided into four parts. And today we're going through part three, opportunities, challenges, skills, and training, which examines which skills and training energy workers believe are in demand. It also looks at whether energy workers have been seeking employment in different subsectors or industries. And part four, the impact on unemployed and temporarily laid off or furloughed workers, which explores the job search and training activities workers have been engaged in, including potential plans should they not be called back to work or be able to find other work. I'll just end our poll here. So it looks like we have a mix of um, energy industry companies, some government representatives, some educators, um, some nonprofit, and some media. So that is great. Uh, throughout the session today, um, you can ask questions in the chat or the Q&A option. Uh, please feel free to enter them as they arise during the presentation. We will have time at the end for uh, Q&A, but we may address throughout if your question relates specifically to some data or or information point that we have on the screen. So the following slides will be comparing the demographics of the unemployed respondents to the employed respondents. So you can see here that um, it was very similar, our unemployed respondents versus employed. Company representation um, was unsurprisingly focused in Western Canada where most industry activity takes place, but we did uh, achieve representation across Canada. Um, I'm looking at the green bars here. Uh, so you can see that we heard from more unemployed workers from drilling and completions than employed workers. Uh, we know this subsector was particularly impacted by the downturn. Uh, we also heard more from oil sands workers. Uh, this workforce consists of a lot of contractors, so it's unsurprising that they may have lost their jobs. Uh, when we compare the size of companies, uh, first of all, we'll define a small company as one to 100 employees. 
a mid-sized mid company as 101 to 500 employees and over 500 is a large company. So most employed respondents came from mid-sized companies, whereas most unemployed respondents came from small and large companies. Uh, when we move down to the type of environment that people worked in, uh, we heard from a mix of head office, field workers, regional or field office workers and facility workers. Um, if we look at the employed side, uh, it very closely aligns with the 2016 census data where 22% of the oil and gas workforce didn't go to the same workplace location each day. Um, and we see 20% there for field workers. Um, on the unemployed side, you will see that it, we got we saw a greater number of field workers, um, which isn't surprising given the last slide of where the where the unemployed uh, people had worked in which in which sectors the high drilling and completions and oil field services responded. Um, on the unemployed side, we also had an option for multiple locations. So you'll see there there's. 14% that worked in different locations. Moving on to the ages of our unemployed and employed respondents. Um, for, on the unemployed side, you'll see we heard from a greater number of workers over the age of 45 than we see in the labor force data. So the employed uh, age ranges very closely mirror our, our October labor force data, whereas the unemployed definitely skews a little older. Uh, this just may be a result of the way we promoted the survey on uh, Daily Oil Bulletin and through Janoran Energy and through social media. We're not really sure why we heard from more older workers. Uh, you can see here the unemployed workers, we heard from more uh, geoscience professionals and tradespeople, which once again isn't a a big surprise given the subsectors that we heard from. And finally, uh, on the full time, part time contract side of things, on the unemployed side, we heard from a much greater percentage of unemployed contract workers. Uh, this is unsurprising given the labor cost reduction strategies we heard about in part one of the series, where 11% of employees reported their companies reduced their contingent workers. Um, but now I will pass it over to Lisette and you can find out more about what we heard. Well, thanks, Brianne. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, let's jump right into key findings of part three, where we asked employed energy workers about the skills that are helping them succeed during the pandemic, the skills and training they believe are in demand whether they have been looking for employment in different subsectors or different industries, and whether they would recommend the oil and gas industries, uh, uh, industry to other job seekers. So virtually overnight, the pandemic has forced uh, energy companies and their workers to change the way they work. When we asked energy workers what have been the most important skills for helping them succeed in their work during the pandemic, it's no surprise that uh, the top three responses were communication skills, flexibility, adaptability skills, and technology and digital skills. And when we asked energy workers what skills they believed will be most in demand in their occupations going forward, um, we see that communication and flexibility, adaptability skills remained the top two and those were mentioned by at least half the respondents. And rounding out the top five in demand skills were teamwork, uh, technology and digital, as well as problem solving skills. And we're just gonna pause for a moment and uh, ask a question. Uh, the question is what skill uh, and please just choose one. Uh, what skill do you believe will be the most in demand in your occupation going forward?
give it another second here. It looks like most of you agreed that communication skills uh, were your number one choice, followed by flexibility and adaptability skills, then problem solving and technology skills. Not that different from our respondents. Okay, so uh, we also have the opportunity to ask leaders from energy companies what sort of longer term skills they're seeing. Um, our report includes lots of interesting comments, um, but here are a few. One company said they are focusing on technology training and training around managing change and building resilience. Another said success requires interpersonal skills now more than ever. And another said that there has been an ongoing shift to require more project management, diversity, and digital skills. So some, some interesting comments from a variety of, of uh, energy leaders. So training and upskilling are key for workers to stay on top of uh, changing demands in the workplace. And when we asked energy workers if they had participated in any skills upgrading or cross training since the start of the pandemic, just over a quarter of respondents said they had. And we do see some differences by company size. 33% uh, of those from medium sized companies uh, said they participated in skills upgrading or cross training compared to 19% from large size companies. Uh, some of the training mentioned by those uh, that work in exploration and production companies included project management courses, training in completions operations, and uh, chartered professional accountant exams. Uh, oil sands workers mentioned mechanical engineering courses, specialized mining application training, uh, as well as IT certification. And oil and gas services workers mentioned non-destructive testing certification, Power BI and Python courses, uh, corporate social responsibility and sustainability certificates, as well as transportation auditing courses. So some interesting uh, comments there. Now looking at the chart on the right, one in five workers said they had been redeployed into new roles or assignments since the start of the pandemic. And uh, some of the new roles and assignments mentioned include um, more active uh, on-site meetings with Indigenous groups, uh, participating in completions operations. Uh, one respondent said they had to take over admin duties of their assistant uh, that had been laid off. Uh, another moved from operations manager to facilities manager. And then another was in asset exploitation prior to the pandemic, um, but is now focused on business development and new play prospecting. So in part two of our survey, roughly three in 10 respondents said that one of their greatest concerns was job security if business conditions didn't improve. So it only makes sense then uh, as the impacts of the pandemic continued through the summer that some workers were looking for other job opportunities. What we found was 17% of energy workers said they were actively looking for a different position or occupation uh, as a result of the pandemic. Uh, of the workers who were actively looking for a different job, 20% were only looking at other subsectors within the oil and gas industry. 37% were only looking outside the industry. And 43% were looking both in and outside the industry. And if we look at the results by subsector and company size, Respondents from the oil sand subsector uh, had the highest proportion of those actively looking for other job opportunities at 29%.
and respondents from small size companies. So those with under 100 employees had the highest proportion of those actively looking at 27%. And the top industries outside of oil and gas that energy workers were looking uh, were professional scientific and technical services, construction, manufacturing, and utilities, which uh, we included as uh, renewable power generation. So boom and bust cycles have long been a reality of working in Canada's energy industry. And before the onset of, of the pandemic, uh, direct employment in the industry had fallen by about 23% from August in, of 2014 to February of 2020. Uh, then as public health restrictions were put in place, the employment situation deteriorated further and employment declined another 12% between February and June of, of this year, a loss of over 20,000 jobs. So with that in mind, we asked energy workers how likely they were to recommend working in oil and gas to others seeking a career in the industry. Overall, 47% uh, would still recommend the oil and gas industry to job seekers, despite its volatility. 21% were neutral and 32% would not recommend it. If we look at those uh, likely uh, to recommend the industry to others, those aged 55 and older were slightly more likely to recommend the industry at 53%. But otherwise, there wasn't much difference uh, amongst the other age categories. And if we look at those likely to not recommend the industry to others, those aged 35 to 44 were most likely to not recommend the industry at 41%. And then we, uh, if we look at results by company size, those from medium and large companies were more likely to recommend the industry to others at 50%. And those from small companies were more likely to not recommend the industry at 40%. So I'm gonna pause again for a moment. And our question uh, to you is how likely are you to recommend the oil and gas industry to others seeking a career in the industry? It's a hot topic when there's no neutrals. <laughs> oh, <laughs> had to prove me wrong. Give it a couple more seconds here. Okay. So you'll see here the results are pretty varied, um, with somewhat likely and somewhat unlikely leading leading the way, um, but. They're, they're very spread out. Clearly some differences of opinions here. All right, we will move on to part four, um, which uh, focuses on unemployed and uh, temporarily laid off or furloughed energy workers. Uh, we look at the length of unemployment, uh, the job search and training activities workers have been engaged in, uh, including potential plans, should they not be called back to work or able to find other work. So just a little bit of background. So from February to June of this year, the number of unemployed in Canada's oil and gas industry, and, and again, we define that as exploration and production, including oil sands, uh, oil and gas services and pipelines. So the number of unemployed more than tripled uh, from 9,900 in February to 30,000 in June. And that increased the unemployment rate from 5.3% to 16.1% over the period. 
Since June, the number of unemployed workers has been slowly declining, um, but the industry's unemployment rate remained elevated at 11.1% in October, uh, with over 20,000 workers still unemployed. Now to get a better understanding of the unemployment situation, it's uh, also helpful to look at the duration of unemployment. And long-term unemployment uh, defined as unemployed and looking for work or on temporary layoff for 27 weeks or more can unfortunately lead to a deterioration in skills. Uh, this can reduce workers' productivity if or when they do find work. And in addition, we, uh, research suggests that the longer people are out of work, the more difficult it is for them to find a new job. And the amount of time and effort dedicated to searching for work tends to decline as well. So we asked energy workers if they weren't working, how long had they been unemployed or temporarily laid off? Of those respondents, 34% had been unemployed or furloughed for less than six months. 43% had been unemployed or furloughed for six months to less than a year. And 23% had been unemployed or furloughed for one year or longer. And if we take a look at the results by age, uh, we do see some differences with older workers, those aged 55 and older, having the highest proportion out of work for one year or more at 43%. So with the longer term persistent downturn in the energy industry, uh, along with the pandemic, unemployed workers are exploring ways to redirect their careers. 94% uh, of the unemployed energy workers surveyed said they were actively looking for employment. And of those that were actively looking, 18% said they were only looking within oil and gas. 6% were only looking outside the industry. And three quarters were looking both in and outside the industry. And the top industries outside of oil and gas for these active job seekers were construction, professional scientific and technical services, mining and quarrying, utilities, as well as manufacturing. So workers who can't find similar work in the same industry or location immediately following uh, their job loss may have to consider other options. We asked unemployed and laid off uh, energy workers what options they would seriously consider if they didn't find employment or weren't called back to work. Uh, and that was within the next year. And their top five considerations were moving to a different province, starting their own business, taking courses or going back to school, moving to a different city or town in their province, and volunteering on a regular basis. And now it's quite interesting if we look at each uh, of these considerations by age, we see that those under 35 were more likely to consider moving to a different province at 62%. Taking courses or going back to school again at 62% and moving to a different city or town in their province at 46%. Those aged 45 to 54 were more likely to consider starting their own business. And no surprise uh, here, I don't think those aged 55 and older were more likely to consider volunteering on a regular basis at 29% and retiring early at 43%. So with over 20,000 oil and gas workers across the country still unemployed in October, uh, with the onset of the second wave of the pandemic uh, across the country, and with nearly one in four of those uh, surveyed saying they had already been unemployed for one year or more 
it is definitely no surprise that many unemployed and furloughed workers feel frustrated and discouraged. Um, our survey results show that they are nearly twice as likely as uh, employed workers. So 61% versus 32% not to recommend the oil and gas industry to others. On the flip side, 25% uh, would still recommend the oil and gas industry to others. And a few comments uh, from these respondents mentioned optimism in opportunities around liquefied natural gas, geothermal, helium, and lithium. So moving to skills upgrading and training, 53% of the unemployed and laid off energy workers said they had uh, participated in skills upgrading or training since they had become unemployed. And the top skills they were focused on develop, on developing mentioned by a third of respondents or more were project management skills, technology and digital skills, communication, leadership, and analytical skills. Uh, as well, 28% of respondents said they were actively retraining to, transi to transition to a new occupation. And uh, some of the training mentioned included uh, fisheries and ocean officer, real estate, day trading, greenhouse gas emission reductions coordinator, uh, and data analytics and uh, data science. So, and that's it for me. Yeah, that was a, a brief overview of parts three and four of our four part series. I encourage you to take a look at the full report if you're interested. Uh, as the report has many more employer comments that add additional context to the charts. Uh, you can follow us on social media by searching Petrol and I on Twitter and LinkedIn or Careers in Oil and Gas on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter at the bottom of our website to be the first to know about future reports and releases. And I will open it up for questions as I run our final poll. should mention also as, a, as we wait for some questions to come in and for you guys to finish that poll, um, if you have any specific data requests or you're looking for information about only mid-sized companies or um, a certain age demographic, uh, you can definitely email Lisette or myself. Um, that's why our email addresses are on this last slide so you have easy contact um, and we would be more than happy to help you. not looking like we have any questions today. I think that means that we answered all of them with our very thorough slides. <laughs> oh, jinx myself. So the question here is, were we able to get any disaggregated data on women versus men or other equity groups? And the answer is no. Um, we, didn't, we didn't break down the demographics that way. Find balance between asking too many questions and uh, and making sure that people are engaged the whole survey. So um, we, we would have liked to have gotten that data, but uh, unfortunately, we didn't. seconds here to see if anybody else has a question. It doesn't really look like it. So, oh. Okay. 
um, how much time will it take to recuperate? Uh, that is uh, a good crystal ball question. Uh, we will be releasing a forecast uh, in March of 2021 that will look three years out. Um, it is looking like 2021 will likely be a rocky year for the oil and gas industry um, at best. Uh, so we're probably we're probably a year out from recuperation, but uh, I think it will depend on the subsector as well. Um, I think a lot of the cuts that have happened in exploration and production companies are due to restructuring and mergers and acquisitions. So those are likely um, permanent restructurings. I don't think they're they're readjusting or resplitting uh, apart if it was a merger. So. Um, yeah, some of the jobs lost are, are likely lost for longer, um, but the services sector is fairly responsive. So as soon as there's the opportunity to increase uh, activity, then they would pick back up quicker. Um, with that, unless there's any other questions, um, I will end the webinar for today. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, I, we don't have another webinar scheduled at this point, but you can follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, we do have a, an Indigenous report coming out um, before Christmas and, and we'll have some other labor supply data available in the new year. So thank you very much for attending.